Hi, my name is TC, and this is a super quick guide for getting a Vroid avatar into Beat Saber for PC. Now, I know there are lots of tutorials out there already that explain how to do this, but I found most were too involved, complicated, or just out of date, so I decided to make my own. I also consider myself really new to all this and have only just learned a lot of these things. Rest assured, if I can do it, I promise you can too. Let's get started. First, you'll need a few things installed through Steam. Beat Saber, you probably have already. Vroid Studio is what we'll use to create your avatar, and Live is what we'll use to superimpose your avatar into the game. You'll also need your virtual reality system to be connected to your PC. This is standard with something like the Valve Index or HTC Vive. The Quest 2 can work by connecting directly with a link cable, or wirelessly with the AirLink feature. Once everything is installed, launch Vroid Studio from your Steam library. On the opening page, click on Create New and select a feminine or masculine starting model. Here is the base model you'll be styling. To move her around, use the scroll wheel to zoom and press the scroll wheel to pan. The right mouse button will rotate the model. Each selection at the top will open up more specific attributes in the left menu bar. You will also see sliders on the right to further adjust your avatar's features. Play around with these to make your model. If you aren't sure what some options do or aren't interested, skip it. You can just select a preset option for now and make changes later. For now, we won't worry about anything in the look section. The defaults work well for a simple avatar. Of course, trial and error is encouraged, but make sure to save your avatar so you don't undo your hard work. I'll be making my avatar affectionately named Vexbot. Oh, and don't forget, save early and often. Once your model is complete, click on the export icon and select export as VRM. We'll ignore the options on the right for reducing polygons, materials, and bones. These are optimization settings that we can come back to if needed. Personally, I like to see how the default settings perform before making any changes in this area. From here, click on the export button. In the VRM settings pop-up window, give your avatar a title and put yourself as the creator. These are the only two fields required. Feel free to add any information you like, but for personal use only, I usually leave all other forms blank. Click on Export at the bottom and save your VRM model. I am saving Vexbot to my desktop to make things easier. After a few seconds of processing, you're done this step and ready to import your model into Live. Find the location where you have Live installed and locate the Avatars folder. Copy or drag your VRM file into Avatars. In the future, you can export directly to this folder from Vroid. We're almost ready to get into our headset. From your desktop, start up Live. Click Avatars in the left-hand menu, and then the button that says Launch PC Avatars. Once everything is loaded, your screen should show what will look like a tangled up model. We'll fix that inside our headset. In the overlaying smaller window, check that the application you are capturing is Beat Saber and that you have your desired target resolution, usually whatever is native. At this point, you can put your VR headset on. We'll continue this video from inside the index. Once you're in the headset, this is what you should see, at least if you're in Steam VR. And if you look down, you're gonna see the live menu right there. It'll just say live. The spiral thing I have on the ground, that's a separate app that's called Turn Signal. Uh, very useful if you're using anything with a wire. 
it helps from your cord getting too twisted. But anyway, we're going to focus on Liv here. You're just going to take your controller and just point it at Liv. And then once the little green thing fills in, there's your Liv menu. So what we're going to do is select Avatar. And there's your Avatar. Now this is probably not what you're going to see at first. You're going to see um, one of their default avatars. Maybe something like this guy. And he's probably going to be all tangled up, kind of like he is now. So when you scroll to the end here, this is usually where the custom ones will be. So there is our girl. I'm going to choose her. Uh, she's sort of straightened out and she looks okay now because I've already calibrated her, but we'll just go through that process now. We'll pretend she looks all jumbled up. So first things first, we will calibrate our T-pose. Click on that. You're just going to follow the directions here. Stand on the feet markers, then match your pose with your arms. Then press the trigger. So you can see uh, I have feet trackers and I have a waist tracker. When I look down, I can sort of see them right there. I'm going to align them with where they are on my feet. Oh, where'd everything go? There we go. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to do the pose that our guy is doing. Trigger. Okay. So that'll take care of the broad brush strokes there and she's still a little twisted I can see already so we're gonna fix that um, save calibration sure say okay even if she looks kind of weird save it we can we're gonna get to the next part here which is edit calibration so you're gonna see a little model of your model and there's gonna be some points here where you can adjust her so you just want to point, click, and move her head so it's in the uh, VR headset properly. But you want to just straighten her out and have her stand kind of how you're standing. As you move these around, your model will move around as well. So you can sort of see it change in real time. The hands should be on the controllers, and they are. But I think when I started, she was kind of like this. Like It's just not always perfect when it starts. If you don't have trackers, that's fine. You probably won't have to worry about most of this. You'll still have to adjust head and arms because obviously you have controllers and a headset. So there's still stuff to do. Uh, once you're good with this, and you can adjust this whenever, but for now, if you're good, looks okay, move around, check everything, say okay. And now we're gonna look over here at the game settings. Tracking, this is kind of where you wanna just zip to. Most of this I don't worry about. Fingers, waist, feet, elbows, knees, and chest. Okay, so I don't have that many trackers. Waist and feet, I do have them tracking. Now, if you don't have trackers, like I said, this is what it should look like. Like as you move, her feet will just sort of drag around and that'll still be fine. You'll still be able to play just fine in game. It won't look terrible, but if you have the trackers, this just sort of makes it look a little more realistic. You move your feet, she moves her feet. That's what we want. Eye animation. So default, she blinks. I'm okay with that. Mouth animation, I don't use it because you typically don't see her mouth when I play. But if you say from default microphone, which is the index microphone, now when I talk, her mouth moves. So that is kind of cool. I plan on using this in the future, but for Beat Saber, it just doesn't make a lot of sense for me. You just see the back of her head, but it is cool. And now let's look at our camera. So I don't really use camera one and two, so camera one, we have six options here. Selfie is what it says it is. It's like you have a camera on a selfie stick. When you turn around, this is where my camera is. You can take this guy and move that to see where you want it to focus. You can move the actual viewfinder wherever you want. Third person, the camera will always be behind you. So if I turn around and look at my viewfinder, which is here, you'll see the back of me because the camera will just spin as I spin. So it's always in the same spot. First person is exactly what you think. The footage will be taken from your headset, like from your view. Gamepad uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me unless you're there with someone else who actually wants to be um, like the cameraman. Uh, I believe what happens is the camera is just controlled by a controller. If you're one person, it doesn't make a lot of sense because I don't have a third hand to hold a controller. Mixed reality, I don't use a whole lot because I don't 
record myself it's my avatar and plugin is fun eventually i'll dip into this more i haven't really gotten too involved in it but i've seen other people who have and i love it so right now what their uh, their default options are uh, the orbit camera and third person camera orbit camera will spin and look at the viewfinder this camera just spins around you and you can see it just spins smoothly and constantly cool but not exactly what I want but there are other cameras that will do fun things like that so I'll have to learn more about that because I do want fun stuff like that in my videos camera 2 I typically don't play with a whole lot because I just need one for right now viewfinder um, I keep it on camera because I like having it here I know if you click on world or heads up display or wrist, you can have it kind of in front of you, like this is set on world and it's here. To me, that's a little bit distracting because if I play, I don't want this in the corner. However, if you want that in the corner so you can see what your uh, camera one looks like, that might be valuable to you. So let's go back to avatar. Okay, so I'm just double checking everything is checked that I want checked. Very good. Once that's done, we can close this, which is just hovering over live again. Bring up our library and let's fire up our game. Even in game, you have access to your live menu. It's right there and it'll show up right here in game. Very convenient. So you can open and close this whenever you want. And if you look back here, there's our viewfinder and there's our avatar. Oh, another thing is when you're in game, uh, if you have in-game avatars enabled, you want to make sure they're off. That sort of goes without saying. But if you click on an avatar that you might have used in-game and you look back there, now you've got double avatars and we don't want that. We just want to see our girl. So no avatar. If you're recording, what you also want to do is I'm going to open the desktop here. What you want to do is make sure, yeah, so see right now, if I'm recording, <laughs> people see nothing because they're just looking at Beat Saber. So you have to make sure your live is what is active because there's the overlay. That's what's going to put your avatar in the game. Sounds obvious, but I have forgotten that so many times. Let's test this out. If everything went smoothly, it's time to see her in action. If it didn't, I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing if you want to see more VR gameplay. Good night, friends. I hate that this feeling just keeps on coming back. Up in my throat, yeah, you feel like a heart attack Can't even talk to your friends who used to be my friends Cause I'm a regular